Hey everybody, welcome back to Heartland Productions. I have a very exciting video today. My friends at Biscotto Stones International sent me a custom made Biscotto Stone for my new Gosney Dome Arc XL. I'm gonna open this up, test it out. I'll also show you how to take these stones out. These are the ones that come from the factory. These are good, they're great stones. They're very durable, but I'm hoping this is gonna take my Arc XL to the next level. Step one is to remove the stone. Your oven should come with one of these little Gosney tools. You can use like a small screwdriver or anything. First thing I'm gonna do is take the, the burner guard out. Just pulls right out. Reach my hand in kind of by the burner. And then get that little clip underneath there. And I can hold it like that. See, there you go. You can kind of clip that up once you have your finger there. And then just kind of take it straight out. One quick thing I wanted to talk about too is that Biscotta stone, the absolute minimum thickness is one inch thick. The stone that comes in the Arc XL is slightly less. It's about three quarters of an inch. You can see right there versus one inch. They basically, they're very similar. I don't think it's going to make any big difference, but this one will be a little bit higher. That's the minimum thickness. The, it's a softer stone, unlike the manufactured cordalite stone, which is extremely durable and dense. This is much more uh, fragile, easier to break. So if you make it any thinner than that, it'll just, it'll just crack and break too easy. Go ahead and swap it out. I'll put a link below too for the Biscotto Stone International. You can tell these are made in Italy and then they're shipped from, see it says right there, from Sorrento. Let's slide this in the exact same way we took it out. You also want to put, before I put this in here, there's a smooth side and then there's a rough side. The rough side obviously always goes on the bottom. Just take your time. So you can see that there is a slight increase. It's raised up slightly. Again, I told you that's very normal because it's a few millimeters thicker than the standard stone that comes with it. It should make any issue. Just you have to be curty or conscious of that when you're sticking your peel in so you don't hit that little edge. First thing you want to do is get a damp cloth and kind of wipe off all the dust because it is a natural stone. So stick your arm in there. Just very damp, not wet. You can see all the, the dust coming off. Also want to make sure you put the flame guard back in. You can see the inside, it fits nice and snug. Now that I have the stone in, we will need to cure the stone. So the very first thing we've done, we've cleaned it off. We want to turn the gas burner on and we're going to burn it in we're going to put it on half power for 60 minutes let it cure nice get any excess or any extra moisture that might have been in it from storage etc out we got the gas lit i'm going to go ahead and turn this burner all the way down to low and we're going to let that go for 60 minutes like that so Biscotto stone is only produced in and around the Naples area in Southern Italy. It's basically made out of material from Mount Vesuvio. There's a lot of volcanic clay in the area and that's what these stones are made out of. They are known for being able to have very high floor temperatures without burning the base of the pizza. It typically allows you to use super high heat and then be able to cook a Neapolitan pizza in 60 to 90 seconds. It also absorbs some of the moisture from the dough and it 
retains the heat for a large amount of time too, so it allows you to make back-to-back -back pizzas without any issues. As I mentioned in the beginning, the manufacturer stone that comes with it is going to be much more durable, and it's basically not indestructible, but they're very dense, highly durable. These stones are much softer. You have to be very careful if you're cleaning it, not to use anything sharp. Don't use like a steel brush or anything like that, or a scraper, because it's definitely going to scrape and, and damage the stone surface. You want to be very careful. Use a, a damp rag to clean it if you need to and lightly brush it with something like a, a natural fiber brush or maybe like a soft brass bristle brush, kind of a pizza oven brush. But just be very careful with it. I'll put the link below for the Biscotto Stones International. Let Tom know when you reach out to them that I sent you. They sent me this one, no charge. I basically gave them all the measurements. This is a test one. So we're very excited to see this one out here. I'm curious to see the results. So it's been curing almost 60 minutes on low heat. You can see this is all the way down to low. After it's done for the 60 minutes, you just wanna turn it off. And I would recommend letting it sit overnight to assure that the stone cools down to back to the normal room temperature. It shouldn't take overnight, but just to be on the safe side, I would do that once that's done. So I turn this off here in a few more minutes. I have, I think about 10 more minutes. I'll turn this off and I'll let it sit to overnight. And then by tomorrow, it should be good to go. Tomorrow though, I will turn it on and I'll probably let it preheat on low for maybe 30 minutes or so before I crank it up on high. But again, after 60 minutes on low, let it cool back down all the way back to room temperature. I would suggest overnight, then you should be good to go. It should be cured. I cured the stone yesterday, let it cool back down overnight to back to room temperature. And then earlier this morning, I lit the oven back up on low and I kind of reheated it at medium or low heat again for about 30 more minutes. And then for the last half hour or so, I cranked the heat back up to high and I'm gonna get the stone back up. Once it hits about 700, 750, that's usually when I like to start making pizza. So I'm gonna make a quick margarita pizza just to test this out and see how it goes. This is my normal biga dough recipe. This dough ball was actually frozen, so I thawed it out. I was hoping to get the pizza made a little bit earlier. I started preheating the oven, then I started doing some other stuff and I didn't realize that the the flame had gone out because it's kind of windy this morning. So this had to reheat the oven again. This overproofed a little bit. It's been out a little about an hour more than I would have liked it, but I think it's gonna do just fine. I will put the recipe for my dough in the, the description below too. Try to get this out. I'm gonna put a little extra flour just in case because it's probably extra loose. I'm just gonna be very gentle with this one because it's gonna lose its shape if I'm not very careful. This is by far the most important part. If you're just starting out and you're wondering how people get perfectly round pizzas, getting it out of the dough box is number one, is that you have to make sure you're very careful. We put plenty of semolina down to make sure you don't destroy the shape while you're getting it out of the dough box. Don't stack them in too much. A lot of times you'll see professional people will get a dough box and they'll just jam pack them in which is great if you have experience. If you're just starting out, I would put a few. So if you have a normal kind of a standard dough box, I wouldn't put any more than six in it maybe. And for something like this, one or two at the most, just to help you get it out without destroying it. Do that. See how it came right out? Oh, I'm gonna put it in my flour. This is extremely loose. Spread out my semolina a little more. I'm not going to have to hardly do anything with this. It's so. I'm going to get the air out. A little more semolina on top because it's kind of sticky. You want to get the air out of the middle. See, there's bubbles, so I want to make sure those go out to the side. Flip it over once and help form the cornicione.
You can tell that's overproofed a little bit. See all the little air bubbles in there? I can't get them out. Every time I pop them out, they come right back. That's kind of a telltale sign that it's overproofed a little bit. Stretch it out a little bit. Okay. There we go. Look at that. Looking perfect. Let's get some sauce on here. This is my Bianco de Napoli New York style sauce. That's why it's a little darker red because it has some oregano and some other stuff in it. It's a good sauce too. Normally I use just San Marzano, but this is what I had. It's still a good sauce, not necessarily traditional Neapolitan sauce, but it is still absolutely delicious. Again, if you're just starting out, go light on the sauce. A little shredded Parmesan. That adds a little bit of nuttiness, a little salt to it too. And put the basil down here. I like basil, so I'm gonna put quite a bit. Some fresh mozzarella. Don't leave complaints about there's not enough cheese. This is a Neapolitan pizza, not a New York pizza. So I'm not gonna drown it in cheese. I like cheese a lot, but I also like having a more traditional style pizza. Last but not least, a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. That helps the, incorporate all the flavors. I'm gonna use my new Gosney Pro placement peel. This is the 14 inch one. You don't really need this. I put a little flour just in case. There's any moisture on it I'm gonna slide underneath there we go perfect this is where you want to do a final stretch if needed when you don't touch it it, it actually stays perfectly round like this so I'm not even gonna to touch it because it's perfect right now the oven's just hitting 750 I'm gonna remove the baffle door set that down here we're gonna launch this pizza Again, 14 inch peel, absolutely perfect. Now you wanna have your turning peel ready. Oh, see the air, I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath there. This is the drawback of overproofing, is that there's lots of gas inside the dough. That's what made it poof up. Okay, it's been right at that one minute mark. Look at that, absolutely perfect. Can you see that? Let's go ahead and set it down on the counter. Hopefully you can see that okay. Let's hold it up, very hot. Let's check the bottom. A little bit overdone there. I mean, it burnt just a little bit. Again, this is a tough one because this was a, the dough was overproof, so it wasn't ideal. But all in all, it turned out pretty good. It's a good looking pizza. I want to eat it now. All in all, I think it turned out very successful. I wanted to reiterate, if you have a Gosney Dome Arc XL or any Gosney Dome or any oven for that fact, do you absolutely have to have a biscotto stone in it? No, you do not. Is it nice to have? Yes. It does allow you, especially if you're focusing on Neapolitan style pizza, but it is something that you absolutely do not have to have. It's something I was lucky enough to be able to test these out and I enjoy it because it gives you a more authentic cook and it gives you a little more flexibility in terms of heat and using high hydration dough and high heat, etc. So is it good for Neapolitan? Yes, it's kind of considered the gold standard for Neapolitan pizza, but by no means do you have to go out there and buy one right now to make great pizza. If you have the factory stone that came in this, you can make absolutely amazing pizza. I do it every week, but this is nice to try out. It kind of gives you something new. So if you're looking for something a little different or you want to kind of try to bring your pizza game to the next level, it's something, it's a nice option to have. I'll put more information below. Again, a huge thank you to Biscotto Stones International for sending this out to let me test it out. I think the pizza turned out great. 
it did. I mean, I've had this thing running for over an hour, so it's much hotter than I would normally have liked it. But all in all, it turned out great, and the pizza's delicious. Thanks again for watching.